as a flight provider to the Flight Opportunities Program, as well as a company that served the research community for uh, about 15 years, uh, this conference uh, is very relevant to what Near Space does and has done uh, throughout its, uh, the course of its life. So uh, today we made a press release here. Uh, tomorrow I'll be making a presentation uh, about our platforms and how they're applicable to suborbital research. One of, the, one of the cool things that I'll be talking about tomorrow is the fact that, um, so John Glenn, a week ago, uh, we celebrated the 50 year anniversary of John Glenn uh, being the first American to orbit the Earth. His Mercury suit that he was wearing, you know, as part of the Mercury program, that was originally tested as part of a, a stratospheric balloon flight manned stratospheric balloon flight that they wore those same Mercury uh, spacesuits on. And so it just shows the direct relevance of uh, stratospheric balloon flight to the development of space technology. And, and, and it provides an example of how historically balloons have been used or, or to, to, to support very important steps forward in, in space. How big are the balloons? That's a good question. Well, it really depends on the size of the payload uh, and the altitude you're hoping to achieve. So Near Space Corporation makes small super pressure balloons used to carry uh, payloads for atmospheric uh, research. And these payloads are only a couple hundred grams in size and they float at maybe 16,000 feet. And so those balloons are maybe a meter wide. Uh, when you get to larger payloads and higher altitudes, the size can increased tremendously.